Hello, everybody! Hello, my name is Paul. Welcome, one and all. We are back with Leisure Suit Larry Five. We are in Miami. Sunny, sunny, tequila-filled Miami in the 1990s. Um, when did Dexter take place? I think Dexter was supposed to be like modern time. I don't know why I'm so fixed. Like Dexter is what I equate with Miami now for some reason. Like the whole like uh, Cuban resurgence and tequila and angel and murders and you know the drill. So we are after what's her face? Chi Chi Lombada, uh, with raven hair at the age of 24, dental hygienist at Doc Pulliams. So that's where we're going, Lower Wacker Drive in Miami, Florida. So first thing I do is, I think I already switched the tape out. Yeah, there's Lana Luscious and Michelle Milken. Just charge up this thing and be on our way. Oh, I was looking for the taxi number, just kind of going through it, and I found this. Uh, misplaced something? Lose something? Can't find that important documentation? Let us help! We're just green cards and we're happy to help any alien who has lost their card. Just call me, Carlos554-1272, and you'll get your replacement immediately. And remember, we deliver lots of finger quotes there. 554-1272. This is the smartest idea. I don't know why I haven't done this in how many years of gaming I've done. I never thought to do this before. Paul, you're a genius. All right, the limousine is called, so let's do that green card thing, and uh, no, no, I, I don't know what I need it for yet. It doesn't make any sense to do it now, so let's wait. Sorry to cut you off, bro. Let's go get my plugged-in little camcorder doodad and be on our way. Yo! That apparently kills you if you try to just plug it out of the wall. It doesn't kill you, which is nice. Got it. Thank you so much. You know what? I just want to get out of this airport right now. Let's just go. I don't want to be here any longer. All right, my friend, let's go. I have a dentist appointment. Good place if you like pain. <laughs> All right, here we go. So right over the Jim Dandy Gymnastics Center is Doc Pulliam's Dental Hygiene Heaven. What an awesome little... No, I'm fine. Thank you. So you take the Ventura Parkway to the Fontainebleau Freeway to the Eisenhower Turnpike and the Slauson Cutoff. Get out of your car, then cut off your Slauson. What does that mean? Get off. Get back in your car. Continue until you reach the Front Beach Highway. Take the Front Beach Front Highway to 22nd Street Southwest and stop there when you come to the giant revolving tooth. You're there. Hey. What? What is... What's a Slauson? Wait. The Slauson Cutoff. Get out of your car, then cut off your Slauson. Get back in your... Car. Is that a joke? It was a running gag from this guy named Art Fern, uh, who was always telling you like how to get to his business office, and it always went looks like the same way. You want to know how to get there, don't you, friends? Oh, you take fountains of vine, you get on the Hollywood freeway, you get off of the Slauson cut off. Cut off your Slauson. <laughs> get back in the car. Get on the Santa Monica freeway, drive 80 miles until you see the giant neon mudslide, and you'll be a dropout city. <laughs> Lady who say, we found you. You don't have to cut off your you said it. So yeah, hey, we we actually looked up a legitimate reference from what the seventies from Johnny Carson. Kind of proud of myself for that one. Okay, so we're at the gym, Dandy. Well, we don't have to worry about the gymnastics center. Don't care. Well, kind of care. Is there anything? Can I look through the window? It looks like there's no one inside the gymnastic studio. Although your mini blinds severely handicap your view. Well, well, whatever. Well, we have a dental procedure to undertake. We have to get a tooth pulled, I guess, in order to meet the lovely what's-her-face. Ooh, this is catchy. Alright, so there's the phone, looks like. That's how I get out of here. Magazines aplenty. After glancing at a few of the magazines, you decide you have no interest in learning what the stock market will do in 1969. Oh, this carpeting is amazing. I want this in my house. You love the carpet motif. In fact, you feel sure you have seen something a lot like it somewhere before. I have? Uh, I'd like to know- uh, well, whatever, I'm sure it's a reference to something I'm just not getting. Happy Tooth School of Art. Nah, whatever, nothing else to do in here. What's this? Oh, oh, it's a lace doily. Adorable. Who are you? Ghostly shapes seem to float on the other side of the frosted sliding glass windows. There must be someone working back there. On the window, a small dymo label reads, Knock on window for service, but she's right there. You wrap your knuckles gently on the textured surface of the sliding glass window. No, oh, man, what do you think we're doing here, eh, little man? Um, hello, my name is Larry. <laughs> Larry Laffer. I wonder if I might get a appointment with any of your dental hygienists? No. Um, wait! But, uh, I need my teeth. My teeth hurt a lot. Help. 
Yeah, what is it? Hello, I'd like to make an appointment to see one of the dental hygienists. I think I'm due for a little oral cavity work, if you know what I mean. Yeah, maybe, but first, let's do your paperwork. So you got a large piece of paper covered with tiny type. Okay, sweetie, let's fill out this little all omission form together now, shall we? Do you have dental insurance? Uh, sure. You have lots of dental insurance. You bet your booty I do, lady. Are your teeth overly sensitive? I think their goal is to cause as much pain as possible, so yeah, they sure are. Oops, whoa, God, oh, I'm sorry, just realized you're unable to be accepted as a client. I just remember we had no more openings this century. Okay. Let's try that again. I have a feeling she forgot who I was completely. Alright, so my teeth can't be overly sensitive. That kind of cost me. Am I allergic to pain? No. So I guess they don't want to call me. Do I enjoy pain? Sure. Do you enjoy sharing your pain with others? No. Dang it. This is just busy work. I don't like this. Alright, apparently I do want to share my pain with others. Do you enjoy mechanical objects in my mouth? You... Yeah, I love swallowing mechanical robots. Do it. Do I enjoy people's hands in my mouth? Yeah, I, I've been to... Trump's Casino. That counts. You enjoy rub your in your mouth. This is getting really uncomfortable. Yes? Do you swallow? Oh, God, I'm gonna blow it. I know, and I can't save. I'm gonna do all this again. Do I swallow? You're always supposed to spit in the little bowl, so no. Son of a bitch! Oh, for fuck's sake. When does this end? Have I ever heard of- yeah? <sighs> Alright, I think this is the final question. I've been doing this forever. Do you know the definition of malpractice? They basically want to know, like, do you know what a lawyer is? Do you know what malpractice is? The AIDS question kind of threw me for a loop. I have no idea what that's all about. Since this is not an emergency, I'll go ahead and set you up with an appointment for, um, let's see, how about nine months of the day? Ten o'clock is good for me? Okay, bye. All right, so we have an appointment. That's great. Uh, now what? Take this while I'm here. You take the lace doily from the waiting room, but you really don't know why, because it's not nailed down, that's why. And I guess I'll just wait here for the next nine months. See you soon, folks. Well, I guess as long as I'm waiting and I have nothing better to do, and the phone appears to be free, let me try calling that number I got. Uh, what was it? Five five four one two seven two. Okay. Apparently that's not correct. Uh. Oh dear. Well, boy, have I learned an important lesson today. So, Leisure Suit Larry Five, they say, is supposed to be one of the first games that kind of got rid of the dead end philosophy. Uh huh. Remember Leisure Suit Larry Three and how awful that was? Yeah. Well, um, they lied. So, if you don't call the green card number from this phone. Shut up. You cannot call it from any other phone. The phone number does not work. It's like, oh, it's the wrong number. So you can only call it from this pay phone and you cannot call the limo to take you back to the airport to make that phone call because it's like, oh, sorry, we're all busy. So if you don't call while you're here, dead man walking. So reload an old game. Here we are. Let's call the stupid number. Jessica and Carl, si hablé español y English. Have you lost your card? Hello, I'm looking for a limousine to take me from the airport into town, I guess. Okay, airport, okay. We deliver your card on the trash can outside the airport. Just leave a 10,000 pesos outside the airport on the trash can. No problemo, boss. All right, so that doesn't work anywhere else. Now, I think, from what I remember, if you're talking to Chi Chi Lambada, you have to give her a green card. And you know, I figure, if, since it's a government green card, it would have to be, like, under someone's name, maybe? Is this the trash can? That looks like something's sticking out of it. That must be my green card. There you go. You take the envelope, open it, and find your non-personalized, 100% legal, quote-unquote, surrogate green card inside. You conveniently forget to leave any money. You feel guilty, but only for a few moments. All right, good, done. Let's get back to the office. 
cut off our Schwanson. Schlossen? Schlossen, that's what it was, not our Schwanson. That sounds really bad. That means we have to do that stupid questionnaire all over again. <laughs> Drawn my sorrows and soda stream. Okay, criminy, we're back. Okay, I can't really think of anything else to do just besides... We got the phone. The only phone numbers I have are for Doc's office itself and for the limo company. I guess I'll just call them. 554 Three six two seven. Let's see what that does. Does she actually pick up the phone? Good afternoon, Doctor Williams' office. Hello. Um, this is um, uh, Doctor Payne. I'm gonna send over one of my emergency patients over for Doc Pulliam. Something's come up and I won't be able to see him this afternoon. Uh, would you please see him right away? Gee, thanks ever so much. I gotta go. It's tea time. All right. Well, that's me. Uh, will that get me in? I'm the emergency patient that he sent over. Go away! You already have an appointment. We'll see you then. But I'm the emergency patient I just called about. Um, maybe I can cartoonishly make myself look like an emergency patient? I'll stand up first. Screw you, game. You're getting on my last nerve. Feeling rather silly, you wrap the doily around your head in classic Three Stooges toothache style. There we go. Now look, now look, look at how much pain I'm in. Have mercy. Yeah, what is it? <laughs> you mumble with your jaw tied shut while you pretend to be unable to speak. <laughs> oh, you poor dear. Oh, you, oh, you were looking terrible pain. Oh, why don't you go right in? I'll have one of my technicians attend to you right away. Oh, she does care. Sort of. You think to yourself, why do you pay someone a lot of money to insert metal objects into your mouth in order to inflict lots of pain? Hmm, Alright, well, I better turn on my camcorder because I'm pretty sure. Th oh man, I hope I didn't miss my chance to turn on my camcorder. Uh oh, is this Chi Chi Lombada? Yeah, there she is. Oh my. Hi. Well, Mr. Laffer, shall we get started? Oh, I don't know. I, I hate dental work so much. I'd rather have a baby. Well, make up your mind. We've got to adjust the chair. Please get out of my mouth. I did not invite you in my mouth. Uh,. Wait. Oh no! Guys, I forgot to pick up my camcorder. It's still in the airport. I had to do that all over again. I got so frustrated with the phone call. Okay, finally, here she comes, and I've already turned my camera on, so we don't have anything to worry about. Uh, now what can I do with her? Oh, there she is, I can just take a big old white cut. What's wrong with your teeth? Why are you just like, Urgh. Oh, Chi Chi, has anyone told you that you're beautiful? Yes. Hmm, gonna have to do better than that line, Larry. Alrighty, does the name Bucky Beaver mean anything to you, Chi Chi? Well, I suppose I've heard worse, she responds. Hmm. Oh, I do hope illegal actions don't bother you, Larry. Well, I don't know. Oh, nothing much, I suppose. Just really meant to jump in on that amnesty deal a few years ago, but I just forgot, I guess. Amnesty? Chee Chee, are, are you an undocumented worker? Yes, I guess I am. Although, I'd do anything for a man who could help me become a citizen. Aha, and in. Say, you wouldn't have any ideas about this, would you? Um, no, I can't think of anything right now, but if something pops up, I'll certainly I'll think of you. Ha, ah, I get it. This button looks like it's just asking for it. I'm sorry, guys. Hey, what do you think you're doing? Oh my, well, there's a, uh, there's a bit of an Easter egg. Hey, just a minute here. If anyone's going to undo my button, it's me. Uh, oh, she gives me a wink for that. That's adorable. All right, well, I guess I'll just give her the green card and be on our way. Here you go, Cheech. You know, Chi Chi, I bet a girl like you could use something like this. You say, offering her the green card you found at the airport. Could I? Oh, Lara, you've made me the happiest woman in Miami. Now I'll be able to move to Central California. Oh, yay. Do your little jiggle dance, dancey, dancey, dance. Oh, I made her so happy. Yay. Of course, it was really easy. Why don't you just call the number like I did? Why don't we go downstairs to my apartment behind the gymnastics studio where I'll be able to express my appreciation in a more acceptable manner? Alright, Larry, sounds like I'm gonna get a home-cooked meal for a change. 
Oh, you're so delightfully naive. Hey, what about my dental appointment? That was really hard to get. A few minutes later, downstairs in the gymnastic studio. Achichi, you cry. What are you doing? Come on, my little Tito Puente. I am ready and waiting. I have a feeling these are going to open and close. Yeah, there we go. This is really weird. What kind of gymnastic studio has this set up anyway? Oh, Larry, I bet you've never done it this way. And thank God for that, too. This is going to hurt you and me at the same time, Chi-Chi. This is a bad idea. Oh, I thought that was the play. Watch out for my trampoline. All right, Chi-Chi. Uh, is this... What are you... Uh, oh. 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 Now it's your turn, Larry, Chi-Chi says, the blood rushing to her brain. Come and get it, big fella. This is a bad idea on so many... This is not sexy at all, by the way. But, Chi-Chi, whatever floats your boat, I suppose. Oh, that's gotta hurt. Down he goes. All right, that wasn't sexy. That was actually really boring. Uh, what a humiliating experience this has been. Finally, your lack of athletic ability has emerged to haunt you. Well, at least you recorded GT on your videotape. The boys in the office will be proud of you. But so much for those fantasies you've had about gymnasts. All right, now I gotta call the taxi. No, the taxi. A limo. Sorry. And let's never see this hygiene heaven again. And he's gone. All right, well, whatever. Doesn't matter. So that's all the things I need to do. Yes, we know all the limos look alike, Larry. Let's move on with it, please. You know, I'll, I'll see you in the year. We'll talk later. Oh, meanwhile, Conservative Political Action Committee peddles a little more than influence. That came out well. As you know, blah, 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 interested in traditional American values, blah, blah, blah. My campaign promises, blah, 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 good virtue, blah, blah, blah. You don't buy it for a second. And furthermore, blah, 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 free elected, I will blah, 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 blahography. Blatant exploitation, blah, blah, ma, minors, minors, blah, blah, blah. I imagine this blah, blah, blah is like watch and beat off to. And in conclusion, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, okay, Senator, we've got it. Here comes the deal. There's plenty more where this comes from. As long as we see some progress on that bill to tighten regulation of the airwaves. We want that smut off the air. And we're willing to back up our beliefs the traditional American way. So, you want it or don't you? You're not suitcase, boy. I've got legislation to write. He grins. Meanwhile, back in your limo. Speed reading. All right, finally. Oh, do we have to do this again? Back to New York City. Is that where I started? New York, California. No, I was in California. That's where I was. Okay. And a fala. Okay, so I think this is pretty much end game. Your visit to the East Coast finished. Your airplane heads back to LA. At long last. You know what? I don't remember really liking Lead Suit Larry 5 all that much, but it's quickly becoming my least favorite in the series. It's so much busy work, but it's a, it's a cute little cartoony style. I like that. So what's Patty been up to? Patty, I guess we'll see her in a sec, is... I don't know what else she has to do. Just confront Julius. What are we going to get together? What are we going to meet? I don't even know where she is. She's still in Philly for all I know. Sleep. Sleep. It's not hard to see, Patty. The problems of two little people don't amount to a hell of beans in this crazy mixed up world. It's hard to do him and Larry at the same time. Larry and all the scenes and all the games and all the world, you had to walk into mine. I don't think she said that line, but whatever. Paraphrasing. We. Remember, Larry, we'll always have none tonight. Here's looking at you, old kid. Oh, parallel. Well, Patty, I'm glad to see you made it back safely. I told you there was nothing to worry about. You were right, Inspector, but... But for a while there, I was really stumped. Oh, you did fine. Now, let's go over what you discovered through the investigations. Let's begin with Baltimore and his Rever Records. What happened? Should we be inside the office talking about this instead of on the street, Mr. FBI man? It was easy. I got past that guard in the SHIELD building lobby just by finding Reverse Baez's office in the building directory. Good work, Patty. Well, what happened when you were upstairs? Did you learn anything about Des River or Baez? While upstairs in Des River's outer office, I found a gold record which I think might contain some valuable evidence. Here, take it. It's in my bra. Oh, by the way, I'm still wearing that shooty bra, aren't I? 
Looks pretty good. Not showing any lines. The barrel's not sticking out. That's nice. But when I played the gold record in reverse at 33 and a third, I heard a strange message. It could be proof positive of the vicious things they've been doing. Good going, Patty. Did you make your recording session I booked for you? Actually, the studio session went pretty well. After a few... After a couple of tries, I started really cooking. Gosh, boss, we I just used an old technique which I'm quite familiar. Here's a tape I, uh, talked him out of. You really have a way with men, Patty. <laughs> Our agents could have never obtained the evidence like you did. Joe, did you discover anything at Cave Rap Radio? Well, I sneaked into John Crapper's office just as the receptionist came back from her break. Nice job of sleuthing, Patty. And I discovered John Crapper's desk, which discovered a folder which looks like some incriminating evidence to me. I assumed he'd miss the folder if I stole it, so I used his photocopier to make copies of it. Here they are. Way to go, Patty. Nice work. I overheard what two live two screw thought were private conversations. They didn't realize they were meeting in a room with an open microphone. Although I nearly got trapped by PC Hammer, I recorded two live two screw on reel to reel tape. Great, Patty. You have proven yourself to be the right woman for the job. Patty, you've done a wonderful job. I'm so proud of you. In anticipation of your success, I have made all the necessary arrangements for you at the White House. Oh, suddenly. Okay, that was sudden. That's a bit jarring. Larry, you scream like a girl. Hey, this is no dream. Your airliner's actually falling out of control. Uh, this is bad. Okay. Um, I can fix this. As your flight plummets from the sky, your life passes before your eyes with unskippable text boxes. For a while, you considered that redhead you dated during high school, wondering if there was some reason that she wanted to come over to her house after knew why her parents were out of town. Oh god, do I have a horrible reading problem? Get on with it! But then you considered your performance since you were back at Porn Prod Corp. Was there an award back at good old Porn Prod Corp? I wish I had looked around more while I was there. But what, what does that matter? Boy, I wish I had discussed those videotapes before I left my office. You did. All in all, you wish you had accepted that redhead's offer. What does this have to do with anything, game? Are you trying to rip me off? The loudspeaker crackles with a panic-stricken voice. Are any passengers with flight experience are urged to return to the cockpit immediately. Well, I rode in a helicopter once. Huh. Well, I used to sell flight simulator software door-to-door. -door. Uh, maybe I could help. I'm fully instrument rated in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Oh, stewardess, you, what's wrong? Oh, not to worry, it's just the pilot's contract ran out a few moments ago, and being a good union man, he refuses to work without a contract. This is the longest free fall in the history of free falls. Where are we falling from? The upper atmosphere? Let's go. Oh, sir, can you help us? Oh, for God's sake, just go, 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 go. Uh, okay, so I, this is my job now. Got it. I can take care of this. Uh, Larry, are you having some sort of conniption fit? Are you all right? Whatever possessed you to volunteer to land a major aircraft? This is far different than your futile offense five years ago when you tried to sell flight simulator software for a major game computer company. Computer game company? Ah. All right, let's just do this. Come on, let's go. Let's go. I'm sick of playing this game. I want to go. All right, I'll just push all the buttons. Turn on the radio. Ooh, it's tuned to our nice soft rock, easy listening MOR album station. What's MOR mean? I don't know. Whatever. Um... The wing surface dicers go to work quickly removing any trace of ice from the hot summer sun-baked flight surfaces. Well, great. Okay. Good idea. Change the auxiliary fuel tanks. You change back to the main fuel tanks. You flip the switch that signals the stewardess to bring you a fresh cocktail. Grasping at anything and anything on the dashboard, you brilliantly and totally accidentally hit something called autopilot. The computer's- the airplane's computer takes over, stopping its spin, leveling out the plane and preventing certain disaster. Uh, oh! Uh, there we go. You did it, Larry! Yeah, that's great. Now there's a problem. Now you have to land this sucker. All right, control tower, talk me down. This is the gold-plated loser coming in hot. There's the runway, Larry. Steadily bring her in carefully. You're coming in too fast. Oh, God, there's going to be a bunch of stupid jokes, isn't there? Whoa, okay, boing. Oh, that was close. You pulled out just in, in time. <laughs> Okay. Whoop! Nope. Boing, boing. Little cartwheel there. That was cute. You gotta keep it up longer. You circle around 180 degrees to try again. 
Come on, Larry, you can do it. Land this beast. Nope. Try it with... Can't even. Not even gonna do it. Alright, this sounds good. This time, I gotta make it this time. There we go. Nailed it. First try. You did it, Larry. You saved an entire airliner filled with innocent people. Surely you'll finally gain the respect you deserve. Yeah, just do it for the respect, Larry. Hip, hip, hooray! What's this? The now all too expected chartreuse carpet lounge is filled with people, all here to celebrate the country's newest hero, Larry. Ha <laughs> ha, Larry Laffer. Look at those banks of lights. That's intense. How do they even get those through the door? It's him! It's Larry! It's Larry Laffer! Huzzah! Huzzah! Hip hip! Hey! Yeah, let's. That's great. Yes. Shower me with praise, boys and girls. So tell us, Mr. Laffer, how's it feel to save the lives of hundreds of people? Where'd you learn to fly, commercial airliner? What's the secret of your amazing rescue technique? And will you earn extra frequent flyer credits? Or you can answer any questions you hear in telephone ring. Somehow, over the noise. Was it my cell phone? What? Mr. Laffer, there's a telephone call for you. For me? No one knows I'm here. Except for everybody. Here, take the phone. It's the President of the United States. Um, hello? Oh, it's George Bush. Hello? Um, who is this? Um, it's Larry. <laughs> Larry Laffer? Well, Mr. Laffner, this is the President of the United States. I just wanted to telephone to express the appreciation of this great nation to you, Larry Lasner, for the heroic deed you just accomplished. And of course, take this opportunity to up my approval rating a few points, you know, never hurts to be seen on Worldwide under CNN under these circumstances. Anyway, uh, what I mean is, you probably don't know, but Vice President's mommy was on the airplane you just saved. By the way, he's still gaining the approval of the great American people. Yes, gaining every month, little by little, getting better and better. In any case, he's so grateful he wants me to host a big dinner in the White House here in your honor. He would have called you himself, but it's long distance. So, laughter, do you think you could drop by the White House, so say, Tuesday for one of those big National Hero of the Week kind of dinners? Um, but, uh, but of course, sir, I'll be there. Do I have to bring a date? But to the president, you say, I really look forward to meeting you and the first lady. Oh, sorry, Lasser. I'll be too busy fish for meeting with some important ambassadors or something to attend. But I promise to send the vice president instead. Nice talking to you, Licker. Good job. And goodbye. Oh, well, goodbye to you, Mr. President. Oh, I, I guess you've hung up. Well, Larry, it things did work out for you. Who would have thought that you would get a personal invitation for the President of the United States to attend a big state dinner? Especially one in your honor. I don't care about any of this. Where's Patty? Let's get these two back together. OTP, y'all. You wonder if they'll have live music. Aha! That's the ticket. And so it ends. The following Tuesday, our heroine patiently awaits her turn to perform at a White House dinner, while unbeknown to her, our hero approaches the doorway. Why is Julius here? What an honor for you, Patty. Just look at all the dignitaries here to hear to perform, here to hear to That's a really awkward sentence. You presume that's why they're here. You are seated at the table closest to the door near the piano you are to perform upon after dinner. This is really awfully written. Inspector Desmond sits across from you, chatting with the woman beside him. You carry on a meaningless dialogue with the two men beside you. What a shame that the president was too busy to be here, though you feel sure he would have loved to meet you. A voice rings out from just outside the doorway. Ladies and gentlemen, our guest of honor this evening, fresh from his heroic rescue of an airplane filled with U.S. citizens, including our Vice President's mommy, Mr. Larry, ha ha, Larry Laffer! What? Larry? My Larry Laffer? Larry, it's you! Patty, it's you! They remember each other. Oh, she's hugging my bald spot. Oh, Larry... I've missed you so. What happened to you, Patty? The last I remember, we were all together on a deck overlooking a lake. Where did you go? Hell, where did I go? Oh, you sweet dear. You really don't remember a thing, do you? It's a long story that perhaps I'll tell you someday, but, but right now, all that matters is that we're together again. 
Ah, say, Patty, uh, since I had a little trouble finding a date for tonight, uh, why don't you join me on the dais? We can talk about old times. Why, Larry, that would be wonderful. Come on, Inspector Desmond. We're gonna go sit at the head table. Uh, Patty, uh, what I meant, uh, 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 hi, Inspector. My name is Larry. <laughs> Larry Laffer. Charmed. Uh, Patty, what? Uh, oh no, is there gonna be like some sort of competition for Patty's affection? Desmond? Desmond, no. Bad. Is he gonna steal my seat? Desmond, you utter asshole. Um, hey, excuse me, Patty, would you two scoot over a little so your guest of honor can sit down? Not that way, Desmond. From nowhere, a Secret Service man appears with a folding chair. Um, Patty, your long lost reunited lover over here. Um, uh, all right. You know, Mr. Vice President, um, you've been always been a secret hero of mine. In fact, the Vice Presidency is one office I've always aspired to. Uh, Mr. Laffer, has anyone ever mentioned to you that we look alike? Oh, of course. And I am proud. Uh, Patty, can we... Why Why am I being ignored by Patty? Did I do something wrong? Before you can... Oh, this is Patty's point of view. Before you can talk to Larry or Desmond, you realize the large burly gentleman to your left is already speaking to you. Oh, there he is. There's Julius is here. And it's fortunate that you're here this evening, as I'm only in town for a short time. Yeah, I'm testifying tomorrow on Capitol Hill at the Senate hearings on pornography in the entertainment industry. Oh, really? You've heard of me then? Yeah, my job is simple. Tomorrow I intend to convince Congress to create tough anti-pornography legislation. Tough enough to make the airways beaver clean again. Just like where they were back in the 50s. Um, I'm up here, uh, Julius. You just love these dinners being seated next to people who feel their sole mission is to impress you with themselves. Especially a man whose breath is enough to curdle hairspray. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Mr. Big, a major West Coast corporate leader. My name is Passionate Patty. And I can bet I you weren't that name. What an obnoxious creep. Now he's humming at you some familiar song. A love song? Who does he think he's impressing? What is that song? It sounds so familiar. Realizing you're still unimpressed, Big digs in deeper. You know, Patty, may I call you Patty? I find you a very sexy woman. In fact, I've been looking for such a woman for a new position I recently created. Between phrases, he continues to hum that melody. Patty, you seem like a woman interested in a quick success. Why don't you be the hostess of my new TV show? For months, I've had minions out hunting for the sexiest woman in America, but tonight, I think I've just discovered her myself. Just say the word, babe, and the gig is yours. That doesn't seem very fair. Larry did all this work for nothing. Then again, it is Patty, after all. At the mention of sexiest women in America, Larry's head jerks towards Mr. Big, his attention riveted on your conversation. Really, Mr. Big, your offer is not interest- Oh, Patty, stop being so formal, please. Just call me Julius. Julius, you think your mind racing. Aha! Patty, something's wrong. He's offering you the job of hostess of America's Sexiest Home Videos, but he has nothing to do with that show. I should know. I do. I was sent by the producer to find... Say, wait a minute. Could he be the buddy behind the show? Julius! Suddenly putting everything together. Desmond, arrest this man! What? You scoundrel! You've been humming the love theme that I wrote for the soundtrack of Larry 4! That song was never published and the recording was never released! There is no way you can know it unless you played Larry 4! Of course, I see it all now. Big, you're the man who hired me to create the music, then erase the floppies to keep from paying me. You're the reason my poor Larry has amnesia. You're the man behind K-Rap and Death Rapper Records, Julius Big. You're the man I've been following this entire game. Oh, you're so smart, Patty. Let's see you deduce your way out of this. 
and leaping to his feet, he pulls out a revolver and aims it directly at you. Uh, and there's secret service people everywhere, Big. Everybody stay away, or oh, I'll shoot. I'll save you, sir. That was great. Uh, what about saving Patty? Larry, you big damn hero, you. Oh, wait, I gotta do something. Um, my gun. Aha. Do something, Patty. Okay, got it, got it. It's a good thing I wore that FBI bra. You think touching your elbows behind your back? Duh! Double barrels, chesty LaRue style. I, you're, is he dead? He's full of holes. Is he dead? No, he's walking. Dead. Congratulations, Patty. You've saved a vice president's life. We'll haul this guy down to the headquarters right now. He whispers to you under his breath. There goes our weekend together, Patty. I'll be stuck at the office filling out paperwork on this low life for days. Um, okay. Well, I guess Patty did have to move on if Larry was considered gone for good. Oh, uh, sorry I shoved your face in that custard pie, Mr. Vice President. Oh, he thinks it's hilarious. You turn to Larry and say, So, it seems I'm free for the weekend. How about you? Assuming you're talking to him, the Vice President whispers carefully so as to not let his wife over here. Uh, yes, well, uh, perhaps I could set up a little excursion to Camp David. Larry presumes the Vice President is being magnanimous. Gee, thanks, he says in a loud voice. I hope you and the missus get a chance to come along, too. Later, I have no idea what's going on. Uh, why is Patty being so, like, Larry, what's that bulge in your leisure suit? Why is Passionate Patty being so like, oh, here's the love of my life, and then all of a sudden it's like, well, whatever, I guess I'll go mingle. Oh, Patty, those just, um, uh, those are some of the miniature videotapes I recorded while on the road. Hey, fun, that'll give us something to watch at Camp David. Uh, probably not. I just love how movies, chimes in the Vice President. Uh, Patty, uh, sir, I don't think, no, oh, never mind. Grab your glasses, everyone. Patty, I propose a toast to us in our wonderful future together. Excellent, Larry. Yes, to a great weekend. whoop Is that really the end? Is that it? Sounds like it. And so, all's well that ends well? Well, well. It seems all your work videotaping all those girls was for naught. Silas Screwemaw, producer of America's Sexiest Home Videos, decided to simplify the audition process by magnetically awarding the show's hostess gig to his current girlfriend. America's Sexiest Home Videos went on to be the mega hit of the season, proving clearly that P.T. Barnum was right. Congress never did get around to doing anything to clear up the airwaves. It seems every bill either submitted somehow turned up mysteriously stuck in committee while they examined the evidence. Aha. Uh -huh. So Congress is looking at the porn they were trying to... Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Got it. After a lengthy trial that increased tabloid sales nationwide, Julius Brink was found innocent of all charges and related to his incident at the White House. Besides pulling a gun in the middle of the White House and pointing it at the Vice President? Sure. In what was quickly dubbed the custard pie defense, he pleaded temporary insanity due to high sugar content of those White House desserts and got off with a mild reprimand from the judge in six months of mand mandatory Jenny Craig meetings. Reverse Baez soon found himself out of a job when Dust River Records went bankrupt. Executives realized there's no longer any reason to add subliminal messages to recordings since kids can't figure out how to play their CDs backwards. Gay rap became a national sensation when they expanded by buying a small television station outside of Atlanta and a 24-hour satellite channel. They promoted PC Hammer to his position as the nation's first nude VJ and their new slogan KTV, more rap, less rap. Got it. The mob's pornography business continued its steady decline, but they'll find newer, more profitable investments somewhere. Piano bars continue to change into karaoke bars, and the entertainment industry remains exactly as honest as it's always been. But all is not lost. Leisure Suit Larry and Passionate Patty are together again. At least for the weekend. Okay. Uh, well, let's start off with all the things I didn't understand. All right, let's... Hmm. Okay, so the entire game... So the game's entire premise was that Larry had amnesia, and Patty was looking for Larry. She was missing him, the love of his life. Oh, where, oh, where could my little Larry be? So at the very end, going through all this, they finally meet, and it's like, Oh, Larry, I've missed you so. You're the love of my life. 
And then they're just like, well, whatever, I guess I'll just be hanging out with my current boyfriend over here. And then even Larry seems cool with that. He's like, oh, okay. That was unexpected. Oh, that will be an excellent time for you to save your game. We have a little surprise in store for you. All right, fine. You did it. You finished the entire game. Congratulations to you from all of us, the creators of Leisure Suit Larry 5. Passionate Patty does a little undercover work. We have a little reward for you. Since your computer has a DAC, here's a sample player so you can easily hear all the sounds from the game. We hope you enjoy hearing them again. Whoa, look at this. You can actually play all the little uh, sound effects. Digital audio thing. Yo! Ow! Oh! Ooh! Oh my! <laughs> well, this is a no. I wasn't done yet. Ah, oh, well. With that being done, I need some <laughs> coffee. Yay! Remember Allo's slogan: Better babe, babe through technology. Was that okay? Game. <laughs> I think that was actually Allo's voice. I'm not sure I was supposed to stutter like that Meg's Headroom style, but anyway, I'm not done ranting yet. So the entire game led up to meet Lizu Larry and Passionate Patty meeting, and then they're all like, whatever. So let's walk all through this here. No, nope. you know what? No, nope, not even in the mood. I'm glad. I'm glad Leisure Suit Larry 5 is over. I'm done with it. Um, so Leisure Suit Larry 1, 2, 3. I, uh, is Leisure Suit Larry 5 my least favorite game in the series? I think so. I think so. Because while I do really like the art style, the music's all right, the story was bad. The writing wasn't that great. It was so cheesy, but I, I, I do like the art style. I do like the art style. It's really nice. Um, now, thinking about this, Leisure Suit Larry 6 also picks up as if all of this never happened. I don't think Passionate Patty is ever referred to again. Now that I think of it, I might be wrong. We'll know a little bit more when we dive into Leisure Suit Larry 6 and 7. I don't really want to, and I will. I'll put it to a vote, and I will if I have to. I don't want to, but I might play Box Office Bust and or Magna Cum Laude. I played Magna Cum Laude once. I hated it. I never touched Box Office Bust because Outlo pretty much said straight up, I disavow it. I had nothing to do with these games. I disavow it. I don't own the Leisure Suit Larry character anymore. God help you all. I'm actually really depressed right now. Leisure Suit Larry, that was really unfulfilling. I did not enjoy that game. I enjoyed some of the beats of it because it had some good writing from both Allo and uh, Mandel. But you know what? No, I'm done. I'm not, I'm not going to wax poetic or be all distraught depressed because the game didn't turn out the way I wanted it to. But whatever. What did you guys think? So far, between Leisure Suit Larry 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, which one's been your favorite so far? Now, 4, you know, don't... I know that's everybody's favorite, so don't... Let's just vote for 1, 2, 3, and 5, because we know 4 is always going to be the best. Anyway, we'll be right back with Leisure Suit Larry 6. I'm really hoping I can get that working in Scum so we can play that with Roland. And I do have the apparently ultra-rare talkie version of Leisure Suit Larry 6. And I think they're all talkies from here on out, so I, unfortunately, the voices now... We're all gone. I know that pleases some of you no end, but kind of depresses me. It really kind of keeps me involved in the game. So Leisure Suit Larry is coming up next. We'll see how that works out. And as always, good night, Jelly Beans. Good night.